All right, so Saturn conjunct Rahu or Ketu. So Saturn, as we know, is like the planet who is the lord of karma, we say in Vedic astrology. Shani is the, Saturn's name is Shani, the one who moves slowly. Um, he is, <clears throat> he is seen as the lord of karma and is like kind of the biggest factor on your just your heaviest karma is your trauma you know your uh, disease any of this sort of stuff uh, we all know that Saturn is the planet of that he's the planet of bearing burdens you know he's the servant the slowest planet the furthest light represents limitations and really he's the planet that is the most aware of his immor his mortality not immortality but he's the most all the other planets they make us feel like we're gods and we could live forever. Venus is like, oh, I drink forever, you know, and I'll never, you know, I'll never not be in love and blah, blah, blah. Saturn is is the most sober of the planets. He is the one that brings about like real maturity. And that, so yeah, that's, that's really important. Um, the condition of your Saturn in your chart, you know, of course, Saturn will be with Rahu Ketu, but it'll still be in good or bad Avashtas, so... <clears throat> what I'm saying can still go so many different ways and when Saturn is really afflicted it shows that there was so much uh, trauma and tragedy or hardship in life that it was really hard to overcome that and the chart shows the whole story of that uh, in a chart where Saturn's really strong it shows that yeah in past lives you handled your your burdens really well and you were mature about it or you gain maturity through it and so in this life you have more of a blessing of resistance Saturn can be in a proud he's actually proud right now probably why he's making me want to make this video who knows but he's in a proud dignity right now so babies born at this time will may still go through a ton of hardship but will be proud of how they handled it and how they grew stronger as a result I've done readings for people who were born uh, when Saturn was in Aquarius 30 years ago and, you know, they grew up in the genocide in Rwanda or something, you know, or were, went through really heavy hardships but were became stronger people and were still successful as a result, you know. So Saturn is just like such a crucial planet when we get into like really serious psychological astrology, as many of you probably know. So what does it mean when we put Saturn with the nodes um well okay so the nodes are like the biggest blanket of our overall karma of our like conditioning and how much we're going to heal and grow and uh in this life you know how close we can get to like full expression of ourself and so <clears throat> When you actually, uh, my, my teacher pointed out that he noticed that when he found Saturn conjunct K2, he found like, wow, this is actually, if Saturn is conjunct K2 or, oh, and in Vedic astrology, when we talk about conjunct a planet, we mean in just in the same sign, not like depending, it doesn't matter what orb it is. Um, so when it comes to Saturn conjunct K2 or even having Saturn next to K2, like within one sign or on like next to it or behind it will actually still even indicate a person who uh, is probably going to make a lot of spiritual growth uh, and you know overcome a lot of conditioning and heal a lot of issues in their life uh, it's because you know K2 is your security paradigm or your like we call your castle of imperfections or your city you know it's the castle that your internal world where everything's super organized but super uptight um, you know you have moon with K2 like I said in previous videos you will want to be very one note emotionally you know it's like only this type of music can be played in this castle always never anything else with Saturn one can be okay having Saturn <clears throat> with K2 well on the one hand this is good because Saturn is our hardship so one knows that the castle of imperfections is imperfect. They know that the, the castle in the city walls, there's not that much to be gained from it. Um, in other words, they know that sticking around in their, only, their, their normal security paradigm that they've carried with them is not serving them ideally. 
In other words, they're more mature about their ego issues. They're more aware that, okay, my ego issues are holding me back. My trauma is holding me back. They want to get out of that castle because Saturn's there. So that's the thing is that, like if Venus is with K2, you'll want to have things like be really nice for you all the time and you won't maybe want to just like go out of your security paradigm and work on your shit wherever Rahu's pointing you to. Um, Saturn conjunct K2 means that your own innate paradigm is, isn't ideal and you're wanting to you're going to want to get out to Rahu more. So that's actually a good thing for spiritual evolution. I hope that makes sense. Um, so this is actually Saturn conjunct K2. We'll get to Rahu too. That's also an interesting one. But Saturn conjunct K2 is really great for <clears throat> balancing out your karma and your lunar nodes. And it's a great placement for psychological healing and spiritual growth. As far as all these lunar node placements go. Remember, anything conjunct Rahu K2 is kind of a tough thing. Um, <clears throat> and I can't just like make it all flowery. I can't sugarcoat it for you guys. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> But this is actually an amazing spirituality placement. You'll find a lot of people who became masters or yogis or mystics, people who have wide reputation for having overcome their issues and become, you know, basically unaffected uh, by anything life throws at them. They'll have, you'll actually notice Saturn with K2 or near it, like within one sign or the other. Um, and... Yeah, so this is actually a very, still a very tricky placement, but it's it's kind of really interesting, and you might see a lot of clients with this. You know what I mean? Um, because these are people who are sincerely trying to get answers and trying to know where, how can I get out of this this Saturn K two past life sanskaras I've been creating? How can I break them? Um, and of course, that's going to be different for everyone, depending on Rahu. You know what I mean? But uh, but basically you know this already um saturn is the least enjoyable planet so it makes one want to get out of their security paradigm if it's with k2 because it's the least enjoyable security paradigm right another way of putting it is they've been servants for many lives they've been in this saturn role of being like a real yeah these people are just hard workers like these people will work so hard so much harder than they need to a lot of times even um so they have like a past life servant quality to them and Saturn think about it, Saturn is old and he's the servant so it means that they're a servant from past lives but it also means that they're an old soul from past lives if you have Saturn with K2 you're more likely an old soul that's been around a long time that's lived many many lives and uh, <clears throat> the thing is is that what do the masters say once you've lived many 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 thousands of lives you get tired of the same thing over and over and you want to break out of your ego binds and that leads you on to the real spiritual path eventually um but usually there's this despondency and this hopelessness and this frustration so people well in general a strong saturn will give you that um but this kind of connects to that and in, in, a, in Indian oral tradition, you'll hear that, you know, in general, Ketu and Rahu are both cruel grahas, but Ketu is less cruel than Rahu. And this is kind of an example because the Saturn Rahu is a little bit tougher than you see. There's sort of still some good things that can come out of the Saturn K2. Um, but they can be too comfortable being a servant. And they have to learn to usually, if Rahu's not indicating that, they usually have to learn to break from that. Um, they're used to being last. And again, in some indications, that's good for your ego. You're going to be more humble, right? These people can be very humble, have a lot of amazing humility. Uh, but at the other end, they can get stuck being last too much. You know, if Rahu's in a fire sign or pointing to something that indicates that that's not right for you. Um, these people can just, yeah, I mean, they'll tell you you know they'll go through like an insane hardship and they'll say like one thing about it you know in their book or in their biography and then a Saturn Rahu person like their entire life will be defined by that hardship so that's a good example of how different this is and a Saturn K2 person man they've had hardship in every life for the last hundred lives why am I gonna let that hold me back you know that's their attitude and that's actually pretty admirable um, <clears throat> uh, these another interesting thing about Saturn K2 is that 
they're extreme they're usually extremely skilled at something that's weird or hard or even undesirable or just a peculiar line of work or a peculiar karma because again saturn's the lord of karma <clears throat> So they have <clears throat> a particular past life K2 karma that they have to balance out when Saturn um, was there. You know, some examples of that would be like, uh, I think Mark Twain had Saturn conjunct K2 connecting to his writing stuff. Um, such an unbelievable writer. Uh, Dan Plunkett, this pro skater that I know just from my skateboarding history, he has this placement and he's like a freakishly good skater who just people just don't like he just jokes with his tricks he doesn't even he's not even trying and he's like better than most people and it's definitely some weird past life gift he seems to have um you know bill murray jim carrey robin williams some other examples uh <clears throat> people who have sp very specific past life karmas now if it's really good avashas you can have or if there's other weird usually with these celebrities there's some other interesting things going on is what i'm trying to say not just this but you know yeah um Rob Lowe, Tom Cruise, Scarlett Johansson, uh, Jordan Peterson, real expert psychologist, you know, that's kind of speaks to the Saturn K2. Uh, Meher Baba, the master, the Indian spiritual master, has an exalted Saturn with K2 in Libra in the ninth house of like gurus and wisdom. So he's a good example. He was silent for 42 years. I mean, that's so stoic. That's such a Saturn thing. Yogananda had Saturn K2 very close. Um, Ramakrishna also had them conjunct, I think, or very close. So you see this quite a lot. Um, and so these people um, can be so used to suffering in life that they aren't phased by it, like a classic yogi. You know what I mean? So that's one of the really brilliant and great sides of this placement. And they usually have had some tough things going on, again, depending on Saturn's avashtas, but some tough stuff going on early in life and so it's like what am i gonna let that define me or am i just it's all it's all uphill from or sorry it's all downhill it, no it's all uphill it's all moving up from there they they hit like a rough thing early on and they learn to be unfazed by it or they learn to just be moving on and then it's consistently through life when other things come they just aren't gonna be as phased by it by the tragedy because they know life's supposed to have hardship that's a really good way to say it is like they, these people just know that life is hard. <clears throat> They're not running from that idea. Uh, we all need to know that. That's why Saturn signs come before you finally get to the sign of enlightenment, Pisces, because we all need to go through psychological shifts and transformations before we can all be free of suffering and happy in, in heaven, which is Pisces. So yeah these people kind of get that and in life life is you know full of suffering like what is the facts of life that the buddha taught the first noble truth the buddha taught after he got enlightened was you know everything in life is full of suffering and sorrow that's fact number one that we all must come to terms with and be mature about as human beings and then of course point number two is it's because we suffer that <clears throat> sorry it's because we desire that we're suffering, that everything in life is full of suffering because we thirst, we want all this stuff. And then we have to learn to transcend that and get on the spiritual path. So <clears throat> Saturn conjunct K2 can create a lot of monastic qualities, a lot of people that would, you know, you're gonna get that if you have that. Now let's, <clears throat> now let's switch gears to Saturn Rahu. These people really need to hear that that's why I said that first. They really need to hear that life is full of hardships and full of suffering because with Saturn and Rahu, it's just like for some reason you maybe got to avoid a lot of that in past lives or you didn't have to deal with so much of these hardships or be such a servant or any of these things and you're coming into this life and it's like, oh, I've got it. My soul just needs this experience for some reason. And it's not fun probably a lot of times but you still have to go through it right so the first thing with saturn conjunct rahu is like well they you have to tell them if they're your client or whatever that you have to learn that life is full of hardships day in and day out it's just part of it uh everything you know every meal we make it's dirty and someone's got to clean do those dishes you know what i mean that's just life like um 
you know, we throw out our trash. Someone has to go and be the trash man and pick that stuff up and deal with it and be around smelly trash all day. And eventually we need to take a life like that if we've avoided it so much, you know. Um, so first thing is, yeah, it must learn to accept the difficulties in life rather than run from them. So, you know, depending on other stuff in the chart where your K2's at, uh, one with Saturn conjunct Rahu is going to maybe be an escapist or trying to run from the, the drama and the, the harshness of life and the harsh realities of life. But it's almost better to just go into that when you can. Again, <clears throat> Rahu things, we, we can't do it all the time because it's too painful. But when the weather's right, you want to counsel your client who has this to go into their issues to get therapy to not run from it to cry about it but this saturn conjunct rahu is tough for that man and you can can be a placement for alcohol and drug and stuff like that because again one's not wanting to deal with saturn which is sobriety one doesn't want to just deal with that emptiness that we all really feel when we're just normal sober healthy beings there's a little degree of that there's one seventh of the of the planets is that saturn and we have to learn to make peace with that rather than run from that all the time or feel like something's wrong with us when that's coming up. <clears throat> that's a really, I don't know, that's my thoughts on it at least. But so there's like virtues of Saturn when it comes to just being accepting, being lazy, being dull. There's times when we need to be dull. There's times when we need to be lazy. You know, the stock market stuff, like I'm so, I've done a lot of research on financial astrology and then on markets and all this stuff and, you know, they say dead people make the best investors. There's a story about, you know, a firm that looked at what are all our best accounts or best traders and everything. Well, they were all accounts of people who were dead or inactive and, or quit or were missing and they just left their investments alone. The idea of Saturn is just time and patience, just... There's a time to leave it alone and go fishing or there's a time to take a nap. You know, there's a time to just give up in life. And Saturn conjunct Rahu, people need to be OK with that. They sometimes grew up in, a, in an upbringing where they didn't get to understand that. And they were it was go, go, go. Or it was just this sort of attitude where they have to come in, as adults. They have to come to come to terms with their Saturn and make peace with it. And this is not something that's always easy. So it's not, I don't want to make it seem like I can just make this happen for you. You got to get therapy. You got to get readings. You got to go, you got to really engage with your trauma, your issues, your Saturn, your Saturn's your, your cross, your bearing, you know, your burdens. And you have to, with, with Rahu, it's what we have to deal with. So this person has to get, they have to deal with their uh, burdens and their psychological issues and their traumas and not run from it. You know what I mean? And so if you have this and you're watching this video, good job, dude. You're honestly already dealing. You're honestly doing the hard, the toughest part. You know what I mean? Is going into it. And once we just kind of commit or try like the life and, you know, God tends to open things, open some doors and make it easier for us. So, um just try you just honestly with this placement you just have to try with the thing that that saturn rahu and not even win you don't even have to be successful you can fail but you just have to try it kind of like krishna says you know better to do your dharma imperfectly and fail than to do another person's dharma perfectly and with saturn conjunct rahu we get stuck with a with a dharma that's not something we only maybe would rather trade it out for someone else's right um so it's about being more of a realist in a lot of ways. Life isn't easy. I know some people who had this placement who are like real, not realistic enough. Let's put it that way. Um, and they have suffered in life from that. You know, just not planning, not having a good budget for your money, you know, um, not just not, you know, putting in your two weeks notice when you quit a job, you know, and then expecting to have good karma to find new jobs all the time. No, like you're, you're doing a bad job as a, as a Saturn servant, if you're doing that, or how are you as a servant, you know, are you resisting that, that, you know, when you have to just sweep the floor or vacuum the house or clean up things, are you resisting that? Or are you embracing that? You know, that's kind of Saturn Rahu. Um, Funny thing is that I noticed a lot of comedians to have this, like stand-up comedians and Saturn K2, both. 
it's like there's something about this placement that makes one given to doing stand-up comedy or to joke about life and you know saturn he's delighted by mercury his friend is mercury which is humor and uh yeah, it's really interesting also because comedians also suffer a lot of like depression and drug addiction and emptiness in their let's like their life or that's where their bits come from a lot. Right. So very interesting. Um, and a lot of stamp comedy is about like the, the fears and the terrors of going into the jungle of life. Right. And so, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Um, this is a placement that's about that, you know, like. Going into that Rahu jungle, which jung we call Rahu the jungle of the unknown, and K2, your castle of your city, your secure zone. Um, in the city, everything's the way you want it. In the jungle, things are so scary and unknown, but really it's not nearly as bad, usually, you know? Um, so, like, you know, going into... Yeah, going into their sobriety and these Saturn things is like an unknown jungle and so it's terrifying. So it's like the worst possible thing. Um, and, you know, yeah, these people might need to have a drink every now and then to deal with that, to go in there and that's okay. Um, but they don't realize, oftentimes they just have to realize that like life is meant to be hard and just accepting that with an attitude, changing your attitude and going about it like that, facing it can be profound. It can bring profound healing. Um, but yeah, but it's, it is, you know, it's common to have, uh, not always, not like everyone has it, but this can be a drug placement, you know, or a, being prone to any kind of vice or thing that helps you cope with life. Um, and not the opposite of the old soul thing, feeling like a young soul, feeling confused, like I don't belong on this planet is what a lot of, uh, of what Saturn Rahu, which could maybe make you feel similar to an old soul, but um they're not old in dealing with the harsh realities of this realm you know like that's what it seems like at least i'm not the authority of your life or anything but um so so honestly like the quicker these people get a handle on working out their misery in a healthy way like getting therapy getting readings anything you can you can let your ego do the better the faster they grow in life um, the quicker they can just get a grip on their, their, their Saturn, you know, their cross that they have to bear, um, and let go of any of these ego attachments that are even connected to the pain, you know, oh, I'm the victim and uh, this happened to me. And that's like what I define myself by again, these Saturn K2 people, they're not letting that happen to them. And, uh, it's so learn from both, you know, both of these can learn from each other. Um, Learning that bad things lead to good things and make like they make way for good and bad things are just like one, you know, in your path, you have to step on different stones to get across a stream maybe and, you know, one of them is just a little rockier and you get a little wet but it got you across the stream and that's part of it like there's steps in life we you might have to move into a terrible apartment. Uh, and it's horrible, but then that leads you to find the other apartment that was perfect for you, you know, and we just we have to have this kind of acceptance and detachment from life to live this drama the best. Um, um, <clears throat> so it's good for your clients to help them remember when a bad thing in their life led them to something greater, actually, and wasn't so bad. That's a good thing to help these people understand. Um, and, you know, they, they can suffer an intense thing, but overcome it and be much stronger, especially like later on in life when the Rahu maturation happens. But again, it all depends on the Avashas and other things. So you'll see a huge variety when you research Saturn conjunct K2 Rahu. You'll see like celebrities or criminals or psychopaths, everything in between, because uh, the rest of the chart has to be assessed as well. But I hope that helps you guys understand a little bit. <clears throat> You know, uh, of course, the signs and everything are <clears throat> going to be an even more important f factor. So, you know, you have to understand that you're not understanding all the lunar nodes just by reading the conjunctions. You have to read signs and houses and the lords and the vashas of the lords and all this crazy stuff to really get the full picture. Hope you guys enjoy that. Um, I'm teaching another financial astrology course next Thursday. Um, you guys should check that out. It's going to be focusing on Jupiter and how Jupiter is the foundation of wealth and um, 
you know, a lot of really useful techniques for people on their individual charts and also talking about markets and mundane astrology and crypto and all that stuff. Um, all right. Thanks, y'all. Take care.